Now let's get into uh, some a little less scheme stuff and let's talk about uh, our off season uh, installation process and how we install our offense. Now, it kind of, it, it took me a little change because, you know, uh, I went from being in Georgia for so long in South Carolina and North Carolina where we had spring ball. And I've always been in a part of the state where we had spring football, all right? And I know a lot of you guys watching this, all right, may have spring football. Um, the what I'm going to present now is what we do in Maslin, which we don't have spring football in Ohio. All right, so we had to come up with a way to get an insulation process done in the spring. So we're hitting the ground running in June when we can get out in the field and work with our kids. Um, there are some rules that you can work with kids in Ohio, and we, we definitely follow those. Um, and, and so this is kind of an all-season install process. All right, if you don't have spring ball. Now, I will mention some things that I did when I was in Georgia um, for guys that are watching uh, this system that do have spring football, because obviously your installation process is going to be a lot, uh, a little different in the spring. All right, so um, what I've done is when I put together this presentation, I kind of wanted to, to break it down by month and what our month what our months look like and what we're doing in those months, okay? So we finished playing, you know, we've been fortunate enough to pass, uh, and, and me at two different schools, I've been fortunate enough to coach all the way to December uh, for the past five years. And uh, it, where it's a great, something great, you know, it does wear you out, all right? That's, that's, that's a lot of time um, of, of coaching football, all right? So for the month of December, uh, we try to be away from football. And I'm going to be honest with you, you know, I know that's bowl season. Um, but by that point, I really don't, you know, I do watch a lot of the bowl games and, and, and I try to watch some football over the holidays. But the biggest thing for me, I really like to try to uh, sit back, be away from football, um, don't watch any film, don't think about, you know, what we're going to install and take a full month of just not even thinking about football. Uh, I think it's good for you. It's good for your health. It's good to keep you energized in your career, completely shut it down in the month of December. Um, enjoy some family during the holidays, uh, you know, and, and don't be away from your kids watching huddle on your phone or, or watching plays or being stressed out by the outcome of, of your season at that point. I mean, you know, you need to take some time away. Uh, you're either going to be really happy or disappointed. You know, we lost state championship this past year. So the holidays, you know, was tough at times because I was so disappointed uh, with that loss. Um, but, you know, you got to get away from it. Um, completely take off, you know, take some time off and get away from it. So that's what December looks like in the process. I always like to show that, all right, so you can really get energized. So you get energized up for January, all right? You come back from the holidays. We start back in school. We're gonna start back with the weightlifting. Uh, the kids are gonna be back in the, in the football uh, facility as far as lifting weights and training with the strength coach. Now it's time to start thinking of football, but don't overdo it, all right? To, be, to, to, to really work hard and to, to do a great job at being a football coach, you can't burn, burn the candle at both ends and really burn yourself out because it's a year-long process, all right? And you'll see when I go through each month, each month, you know, each month gets a little more and more uh, involved. So we have our big offensive staff meeting, all right? We get back into the office and all the coaches come together and we talk. We talk about what we didn't like the past season. We talk about what we did like, what changes we might wanna make. We take a bunch of notes. We put some things up on the whiteboard and we kind of decide, okay, this is the direction that we want our offense to go for the next season, okay? So that's established. Then we start looking at self-scouting data, okay? Um, play efficiency, all right? And then, then we get into the data uh, and, and, and understand what schemes worked and why they worked or what schemes didn't work and why didn't they work well, 
And from that point, we take that and we say, okay, we'll keep some of these schemes the same, or we may change them, or we may take them out completely. Like this past season, we took a couple concepts out and we're putting some new ones in. Okay, so so this is January is the time to start ta having these conversations. Okay, so we have that one big staff meeting. Uh, we talk about it as a staff, and 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 uh, we kind of create a possible depth chart of the returning players. So we, we got an idea of who 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 we want to play where and what that may look like. You know, of course, it's not set in stone. We don't set any depth charts final until August. Um, but you need to know who's returning. Then we create a clinic plan. You know, what Glazer clinics are we going to go to? What uh, what clinics are we going to What colleges are we going to go sit down with their staffs and talk to? What are we going to study that offseason that, that pertains to our offense and how we can get better? There's always something you can learn, all right? And, and you know, there's you know, I've been doing this for almost 20 years, all right? And I'm always trying to learn and always trying to see what other people are doing. So we create our clinic plan then, all right? So that's January. All right. No football stuff with the kids. All right. And then leave them alone. They're playing basketball. All right. They're going to school. We just practice football from June to December. Give them some time. They're in the weight room getting bigger, faster, and stronger. Let them concentrate on their training. All right. So then we get into February. Okay. So February, all right, our offensive staff meetings are biweekly. All right. So we meet. We meet, uh, you know, every other week, and we're not doing long meetings. And we're 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 using we're collaborating on Google Documents, you know, Google Sheets, and just touching base is what we're doing. Because really, the way we do things, um, really, each position coach is responsible for the install within his group. We never have a full like me or Coach Mazer, our, our our offense line coach, co-offense coordinator. We. Yeah, you know, he and I never sit down and meet with the entire offense. All right, I'm responsible for the quarterbacks. All right, Coach Miller is responsible for the receivers. So when we come together in June for seven on seven, if they don't know the routes, you know, if we're not on the same page, it's because we dropped the ball somewhere in communication as far as our our install. So so each coach is responsible for his install within his position group. So we go to clinics in February. We start building our playbook. All right, we do a playbook every year. Now that thing changes. It's a it's a move. It's a steady change in document. Okay, because um, you know things change. You get into August. Some things work. Some things don't. Um, you're just building that playbook. We do it every year. And that's what we build our installs off of. We go into Google. We do our uh, playbook in, in Google Slides. And we copy and paste from Playmaker Pro into there, and it's a nice, neat playbook. And then we can use those to, as installs in a, a Huddle Presenter. And then we start our skill work with players one day a week. Okay, so once a week. Um, like I bring the quarterbacks in at 6 a.m. on Thursdays. All right, and we go through some drill work. We do the indie sessions for about 30 to 45 minutes. All right, starting in February. It's usually late February. It's usually after President's Day. So we're talking late February. We get in there, we do just enough drill work. All right, again, I don't want to burn them out. All right, a lot of my guys play baseball. So, they, you know, they only got so many throws in the arm. All right, so I don't want to. I don't want to sit there and you know work them three days a week throwing the football. I want them lifting weights. I want them running, and I want them working working their whatever their second and third sport is that season. So we'll start some once a week skill work. Position coach run that, and it has to be you know um, uh, the rules set. We can only work with seven kids at a time. March, we're still into our biweekly offensive uh, staff meetings. Uh, typically, we're meeting about uh, scheme, plays, building the playbook, depth charts, how's people doing in the weight room, who's not being consistent in the weight room. Um, you know, and, and when I get when the system keeps getting built up, I'm going to share a lot of documents. Uh, and you guys certainly can reach out to me for any documents that we use in our staff meetings. I'd be willing to share with you guys. Um, but, and then we create an install schedule, okay? 
Now our install schedule, we, we use a Google workbook, all right, and we go in there and we say, okay, we're gonna run, we're gonna run install this run, and typically we go one run, two pass concepts, a protection and an RP up, okay, um, per week. So we put it on a Google workbook with the schedule, and we start our skill, we're still doing our skill work, and then we have some throw, throwing session with the receivers, and of course that's open field, no instruction going on, that's kind of more player driven. Uh, they get out there and they, they, you know, they throw some routes. Um, April and May, April and May, this is when we start our install process, okay? What we do is uh, we do our skill work once a week and we start meeting with players about scheme. All right, we meet with them through huddle. All right, we don't actually sit down with all the kids and meet about football. All right, when I say meet with them, we post on huddle and install every week. All right, and then we tell the kids, if you have questions, see your position coach. All right, so we can go through that. Uh, the kids are watching it. Um, I know this past spring we used Zoom a lot and, and Google, well, it's Google Hangouts. And uh, that worked great. And I think that's something I'm gonna use going forward. That's something I kind of pulled from this whole uh, COVID shutdown was being able to use Google Hangouts as a meeting tool with my players. Cause you can share your screen and they're looking at what you're looking at. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. How get, get creative how you install. Um, and we're working in small groups, position groups. You know, we're still in the process where we work seven on one. Now, when I was in Georgia, April and May, you know, it looks about the same up until April and May. When you're in April and May there, you're preparing for spring ball. And really, it's the same thing we're doing here. It's just you guys are actually being able to take those weekly installs that you're installing, and then when spring practice starts, you can run those in the order that you installed them. So, um, so that's really the only difference between uh, what I'm doing now um, in Ohio and what, what I did down in, in, in Georgia was in April and May, we had spring practice, and we were able to... Uh, able to get out on the grass and actually run the plays that we had installed through Huddle Presenter. So in June, then we're weekly, you know, and now we're up, we're not bi-weekly anymore. We're meeting as a staff uh, every week. And we got our camp days. In Ohio, you get 10 camp days. So that's 10 actual practices. It's kind of like spring practice. We're not full pads, we're just helmets. Um, but, but we get a lot of work done in that. We actually get on the grass, get on turf, and, and get working with the kids. And what we do is we go back through the install schedule from the spring. So how we put the you know, week one, week two, week three install, that's the order we go in to run in plays um, during our camp days and in our seven on seven tournaments. So we go to, you know, uh, we didn't have, unfortunately we're not having them this year, but typically we'll go to three or four seven on seven tournaments. We go to Ohio State, Penn State, uh, Pitt, um, you know, those type of things and, and get some seven on seven work. People say, well, it creates bad habits. You know, you, they're keeping score or whatever. But I tell you, we get a lot out of seven on seven tournaments. We find out guys that are going to break under pressure. Well, we get to see them getting out there and competing, trying to win something. So I really enjoy the seven on seven tournaments. Also, at some point in June and July, I think it's a good time to get away with family. Go do something. I know my, my wife and I, we try to come out west every summer for 10 days. Take some time off of football because come August, if the, that's when the grind's going to start, and you want to feel refreshed and ready to go. I know that uh, typically, you know, I go off, you know, sometime in June. I don't miss camp days, um, and then we have a dead week right before we start camp in August, where we completely shut our football operations down, and everyone can go on vacation and not have to worry about football. Uh, we do that right before we start at the end of July. So that's important uh, to get off so everyone comes back refreshed, rested up, ready to get after it. So then in August, like I said, you come back from vacation, 
All right, now it's go time. All right, you got staff meetings daily. We, we meet as an offense staff. We watch the practice film from that camp day. We make our scripts, our cards. Uh, we meet about schemes. Now it's start the time we start to add to our base schemes. We start adding motions, different formations, different tags. All right, and then we're going into our scrimmages. All right, we're going to our scrimmages. We're, we're seeing what plays work, um, seeing what we really like, kind of finding out who we are. And we narrow down our depth chart, and then going into week one, we have an idea of, of, uh, of what we do well on offense. And the sooner you can figure that out, you know, when I was a young coach, we did, we were running all kinds of stuff, and I wouldn't as organize from an installation process as I am now, mainly because. You know, I got 19 years of coaching experience, all right? Back when I had three years of coaching experience, I just didn't know any better. I thought more the more plays, the better. You just outthink everyone. Um, but now that, that we narrow down our depth chart and we narrow down our schemes and we have a process in how we install and we have a schedule and we stick to our install schedule, I feel like we find out earlier who we are offensively, what we do well, what we do well in going into week one. Um, typically, you know, back in the past, it'd be about week three or four when I start to get an idea of what we do well on offense. And that's not good, especially if you play really good teams early on. And I think the more prepared from an installation process a team is, the better chances they have to being successful in week one, week two, week three. That's what separates the teams early in the season before you start playing games. So, uh, you know, the biggest thing with the install process is being organized, having a plan, and sticking to that plan. So that's, that's, how, we, that's how we install in our pro-gun spread system.